using the factor analytic method, the personality traits that Raymond B. Cattell and Hans Eysenck derived varied in number. Now, this does not indicate an inherent weakness in the method, but instead reflects the way each theorist chose to measure personality. Some more recent personality researchers have expressed dissatisfaction with both theories, suggesting that Isink had too few dimensions, three, and Cattell had too many factors, 16. Working at the Gerontology Research Center of the National Institutes of Health in Baltimore, Maryland, Robert McCrae and Paul Costa embarked on an extensive research program starting in the 1980s that identified five so-called robust or big five factors. These factors are neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. More than 25 years and hundreds of studies later, McCray described the five-factor model as a turning point in the history of personality theory. Presently, most researchers who study personality traits agree that five, and only five, and no fewer than five dominant traits continue to emerge from factor analytic techniques, mathematical procedures capable of sifting personality traits from mountains of test data. Whereas many contemporary theorists believe that five is the magic number, as I mentioned earlier, theorists such as Cattell found many more traits, and Isink insisted that only three major factors can be discerned from a factor analytic approach. In addition, Gordon Allport's common sense approach yielded five to ten traits that are central to each person's life. The five-factor theory, often called the Big Five, includes neuroticism and extroversion, but it adds openness to experience, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. Because some familiarity with Cattell's trait theory enhances the understanding of McCray and Costa's five-factor theory, Cattell's work is discussed and compared with that of McCray and Costa. First, Cattell and McCray and Costa both used an inductive method of gathering data. That is, they began with no preconceived bias concerning the number or name of traits or types. Other factor theorists, however, have used the deductive method. That is, they have preconceived hypotheses in mind before they begin to collect data. Second, Cattell used three different media of observation to examine people from as many angles as possible. Third, Cattell divided traits into common traits, those shared by many, and unique traits, those peculiar to one individual. He also distinguished source traits from trait indicators or surface traits. Um, included in the personality traits were temperament traits, which are concerned with how a person behaves. Temperament traits include both normal and abnormal traits. Of the 23 normal traits, 16 are measured by Cattell's famous 16 PF scale. A comprehensive knowledge of the mathematical operations involved in factor analysis is not essential to identify trait and factor theories of personality, but a general description of this technique should be helpful. To use factor analysis, one begins by making specific observations of many individuals. These observations are then quantified in some manner. Uh, for example, height is measured in inches, weight in pounds, aptitude and test scores, uh, job performance by rating scales, and so on. The next step is to determine which of these variables, scores, are related to which other variables, and to what extent. To do this, calculate the correlation coefficient between each variable and each of the other 999 scores. A correlation coefficient is a mathematical procedure for expressing the degree of correspondence between two sets of scores. With a thousand separate variables, the table of intercorrelations would be quite cumbersome. At this point, one may turn to factor analysis, which can account for a large number of variables with a smaller number of more basic dimensions. These more basic dimensions can be called traits. Uh, that is, factors that represent a cluster of closely related variables. Factor analysis is a mathematical procedure for reducing a large number of scores to a few uh, general variables or factors. Correlations of scores with factors are called factor loadings. 
Traits generated through factor analysis may be either unipolar traits scaled from zero to some large amount or bipolar traits having two opposing poles with zero representing a midpoint. Introversion versus uh, extroversion, liberalism versus conservatism, and social ascendancy versus timidity are examples of bipolar traits. For factors to have psychological meaning, the analyst must rotate the axes on which the scores are plotted in order for math mathematically derived factors to have psychological meaning. The axes on which the scores are plotted are usually turned or rotated into a specific uh, mathematical relationship with each other. This rotation can be either orthogonal or oblique, but advocates of the five factor theory favor the orthogonal rotation whereas Cattell favored an oblique rotation. The oblique rotation procedure ordinarily results in more traits than the orthogonal method. McCray and Costa's five-factor model began as an attempt to identify basic personality traits as revealed by factor analysis. This work soon evolved into a taxonomy and the five-factor model. After much additional work, this model became a theory one that can both predict and explain behavior. Here are a couple of uh, brief biographies of our big five theorists. Robert McCrae was born on April 28, 1949, in Maryville, Missouri, the youngest of three children. After completing an undergraduate degree in philosophy from Michigan State University, he earned a PhD in psychology from Boston University. Following the lead of Raymond Cattell, he began using factor analysis as a means of measuring the structure of human personality. After completing his academic work, McCrae began working with Paul Costa at the National Institute of Health in 1976. Paul T. Costa Jr. was born September 16, 1942, in Franklin, New Hampshire. He earned his undergraduate degree in psychology from Clark University and both his master's as well as a Ph.D. from the University of Chicago. He began working with Robert McRae at the National Institute of Aging's Gerontology Research Center, where he continues to conduct research on human development and aging. The collaboration between Costa and McRae has been unusually fruitful, with well over 200 co-authored research articles and chapters and several books. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Costa and McRae, like most other factor researchers, were building elaborate taxonomies of personality traits, which they used to examine the stability and structure of personality. As with many other factor theorists, they quickly discovered the traits of extroversion, neuroticism, and openness to experience. As late as 1983, McCray and Costa were arguing for a three-factor model of personality, but by 1985, they began to report work on the five factors of personality, having added agreeableness and conscientiousness. Most personality psychologists have opted for this model. Recently, the five factors have been found across a variety of cultures and languages. In addition, the five factors show some permanence with age. That is, adults in the absence of catastrophic illness, such as Alzheimer's, tend to maintain a consistent personality structure as they grow older. McCray and Costa agreed with Isink that personality traits are basically bipolar with some people scoring high on one factor and low on its counterpart. For example, people who score high on neuroticism tend to be anxious, temperamental, self-pitying, self-conscious, emotional, and vulnerable to stress-related disorders, whereas people with low scores on neuroticism tend to have opposite characteristics. People who score high on extroversion tend to be affectionate, jovial, talkative, a joiner, and fun-loving whereas low extroversion scores tend to have opposing traits. High openness to experience scores prefer variety in their life and are contrasted with uh, low openness to experience scores who have a need for closure and who gain comfort in their association with familiar people and things. People who score high in the direction of agreeableness tend to be trusting, generous, yielding, acceptant, and 
good-natured. Low direction of agreeableness scores are generally suspicious, stingy, unfriendly, irritable, and critical of other people. Finally, people high on the conscientiousness scale tend to be ordered, controlled, organized, ambitious, achievement-focused, and self-disciplined. Now, you might find it helpful to use the acronym OCEAN, Openness, Conscientiousness, Extroversion, Agreeableness, and Neuroticism, when trying to remember the big five traits. It is important to note that each of these five personality factors represents a range between two extremes. For example, extroversion represents a continuum between extreme extroversion and extreme introversion. In the real world, most people lie somewhere in between the two polar ends of each dimension. Originally, the five factors were simply a taxonomy, a classification of personality traits. By the late 1980s, Costa and McRae were confident that they had found a stable structure of personality. In shaping a theory from the remnants of a taxonomy, McRae and Costa were insisting that their personality structure was able to incorporate change and growth into its tenets and to stimulate empirical research as well as organize research findings. In other words, their five-factor taxonomy was being transformed into a five-factor theory. McRae and Costa predicted behavior through an understanding of three central or core components and three peripheral ones. The three core components are as follows, basic tendencies, characteristic adaptations, and self-concept. You may want to refer to figure 13.3 in the text. The central or core components are represented by rectangles, whereas the peripheral components are represented by ellipses. The arrows represent dynamic processes and indicate the direction of causal influence. As defined by McCray and Costa, basic tendencies are one of the central components of personality. Core components of five-factor theory include characteristic adaptations, that is, acquired personality structures that develop as people adapt to their environment. McCray and Costa explain that self-concept refers to knowledge and attitudes about oneself. Peripheral components include biological bases, objective biography, and external influence. The principal biological mechanisms that influence basic tendencies are genes, hormones, and brain structures. The second peripheral component is objective biography, defined as everything the person does, thinks, or feels across the whole lifespan. The question of how people respond to the opportunities and demands of the context is what external influences is about. This is really starting to sound like a theory now. The two most important core postulates are basic tendencies and characteristic adaptations. Basic tendencies have four postulates, individuality, origin, development, and structure. The individuality postulate stipulates that every adult has a unique pattern of traits. The origin postulate takes a clear, if somewhat controversial stance. The development postulate assumes that traits develop and change through childhood, adolescence, and mid-adulthood. The structure postulate states that traits are organized hierarchically from narrow and specific to broad and general, just as Isink had suggested. The postulate concerning characteristic adaptations states that over time, people adapt to their environment by acquiring patterns of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are consistent with their personality traits and earlier adaptations. The second characteristic adaptation postulate, maladjustment, suggests that our responses are not always consistent with personal goals or cultural values. The third characteristic adaptation po postulate states that basic traits may change over time in response to biological maturation, changes in the environment, or deliberate interventions. The five-factor theory of McRae and Costa has drawn a considerable amount of research and is very popular in the field of personality. Costa and McRae have developed a widely used personality inventory, the NEO-PI. Traits have been linked to vital outcomes such as physical health, 
well-being and academic success. Traits have also been linked to more everyday outcomes, such as mood. Eric Knopfel and Richard Robbins studied the relationship of traits and academic performance. They found that conscientiousness was the most important trait for predicting GPAs in high school and college. Some studies find, as many parents and educators fear, that daily internet use is associated with higher levels of depression and poor well-being in teens, while others have found no correlation between these variables. In one recent study of Dutch youth, the researchers reason that the internet is not used the same way by all teens, nor does usage affect teens in the same manner. The researchers surveyed an enormous number of adolescents in the Netherlands via an online questionnaire. The sample was 7,888 teens, ranging in age from 11 to 21 years. In addition to completing the Big Five to assess levels of extroversion, conscientiousness, agreeableness, neuroticism, and openness, they were queried about their internet use, loneliness, self-esteem, and depressive moods. The compulsive use of the internet was predicted in the study by personality traits. More introverted, less agreeable, and more neurotic adolescents and young adults were more likely to score high on compulsive use. And this compulsive use was in turn more strongly predictive of feelings of loneliness and having depressive symptoms. Like other theories, trait and factor theories must be judged by six criteria of a useful theory. First, do trait and factor theories generate research? On this criterion, the five-factor model of Costa and McRae must be rated very high. The trait theory of McRae and Costa and other advocates of the Big Five personality structure have also generated large amounts of empirical research. Second, are trait and factor theories falsifiable? On this criterion, trait and factor theories receive a moderate to high rating. Third, trait and factor theories are rated high on their ability to organize knowledge. Anything that is truly known about personality should be reducible to some quantity. Fourth, the useful theory has the power to guide the actions of practitioners. And on this criterion, trait and factor theories receive mixed reviews. Are trait and factor theories internally consistent? The Big Five theory and research is internally quite consistent, even if there are some people who disagree with the number of basic dimensions of personality. The final criterion of a useful theory is parsimony. Ideally, trait and factor theories should receive an excellent rating on this standard because factor analysis is predicated on the idea of the fewest explanatory factors possible. In looking at the concept of humanity, the five-factor theorists were not concerned with traditional themes such as determinism versus free choice, optimism versus pessimism, and teleological versus causal influences. First, factor analysts see humans as being different from other animals. Only humans have the ability to report data about themselves. From this fact, it can be inferred that McRae and Costa believe that humans possess not only consciousness, but self-consciousness as well. Second, McRae and Costa placed emphasis on genetic factors of personality. They believe that traits and factors are both inherited and have strong genetic and biological com components, and uh, hence are universal. Trait theories are more concerned with individual differences than with similarities among people.